In the previous video, we understood what is a deformer node and what attributes and function come with the deformer node. In this chapter, we would write a ripple deformer. And before we start writing the code, I would show you what does this ripple deformer look like and how we create a deformer in our Maya scene and what are what is the functionality of it. So I have three lines of code here, Maya commands, I load the script and then I create a deformer. And as soon as I create deformer, it gives me two attributes, amplitude and displace. And with the amplitude, I can create a wave ripple on the geometry. And with the displace, I can displace that wave. And it gives pretty artistic effects if you multiply the subdivisions. So these are all the shapes I'm changing just by adding the subdivisions into the geometry. And if I would change the displace, it would give you that ripple on the mesh. And you can change the amplitude which flows in the direction of the normal of a vertex. So that's what we are going to create in this video. In the previous video, we saw what functions uh, we need for writing a deformer. So now we would go back to Maya and uh, start writing some code. So before I create any function, I would import the required classes my.openMaya as openMaya and I would have to import mpx class as well and then I would create a variable for the node name and I would call this as a ripple variable because uh, or I would give the name to this node name as a ripple because in this example we are going to create a ripple deformer. Then I would create a node ID variable which would be of openMaya.m type ID and I would give it a hexadecimal number. Right. Then I would need a class and I would call this class as a ripple and we know that we would have to inherit something here so for when we created the commands we inherited mpx command class and when we created our custom node In that case, we imported mpx node class. And in the cases of deformer, we would import mpx deformer node class. All right. So I would go ahead and inherit open Maya mpx dot mpx deformer node I would execute these commands so that I can see the command completion then we know that we need a creator function and initialize function so I would create a creator function which would be outside the class and in this case I would call deformer create creator and I would just type it for now and I would also create node initializer and I would not pass anything we also know that we need to create a constructor here 
I would pass self and then I would call the constructor of mpx deformer node class all right so here we have our initialization or the constructor so I would now type what goes inside the deformer creator function we know that we would have to create a pointer here which would be open Maya M P X dot as M P X P T R and then I would pass the instance of the class here and I would return this pointer that's all we understood in the previous chapters I would not write the node initializer function for now I would just give a command pass to it and then we know that we need initialize plugin and uninitialize plugin functions so for those functions I'm going to copy them from the V node which we created in the previous chapters so I would copy that and paste it here okay all right so we have the node name already we have the node ID in this case we call it node creator or the deformer creator so I would replace the node creator with deformer creator and the node initializer is the same so here we would add one more argument in this example which is a node type and it's mpx node dot k deformer node so if we would not have added this argument we had not received any error it would have worked fine but when we when we create any node inside Maya we are expected to define node type as well so in this case is it's a deformer node in the previous cases we should have added the the K dependent node because the dependency node or the custom node which we wrote was a K dependent node type so if we will not add we will not receive any error but it's a good practice to let Maya know what kind of node is going to come and what kind of node the Maya is going to tackle with so we have added this fifth argument and besides that everything is fine and in MFN plugin function you can also define the name of the author and you can also define the version number so these are a few optional things which you can add in these two functions now we are going to write our node initializer function as we know here we create the attributes and then we attach the attributes to the node and then we design the circuitry so we would go back to our blackboard and we would understand which uh, attributes we are going to add for this deformer node and uh, how we will design the circuitry so the node which we are going to design will have true user defined attributes one would be amplitude another would be displace and they both would be float type attributes 
and the range of amplitude would be from 0 to 1 and the range of displace would be from 0 to 10 so we understand we would have to add two attribute to float type numeric attribute which would have these ranges let's get back to Maya and write more code so we know that the first thing which we need is mfn adder which is open Maya dot mfn numeric attribute this is a function set that works on the attribute which store the numeric type values we have used this function set before when we created the custom node as well so after that we know we would create mfn adder dot create the first argument of create function would be long name attribute value comma short name I would uh, keep it at her well comma then we would define what type of value it would store which would be open Maya dot mfn numeric data dot k float it's a float type value and by default or its default value value will be 0, 0 and we know that this function returns a m object handle so we would declare that handle inside ripple class and I would call it amplitude well or I should call it amplitude mobj and it's a open Maya dot m object type so we know that we are going to create another attribute but before that we would have to define the maximum minimum range and we would have to set the properties of this attribute so we would set it as mfn adder dot keyable equals to 1 comma mfn adder dot set min which sets the minimum value and it's 0.0, .0 comma mfn adder dot set max is equals to 1.0 okay now if you take a look at our previous wheel node code we would see that we defined set readable and set writable and set storable here and why we haven't done it in this example so for for explaining that I would take you to the Maya API documentation and this documentation is for MFN attribute which says that by default attributes are readable writable connectable and storable and they can be cached and they are not keyable not hidden all right so in the previous example when we wrote the wheel node I set it as readable and set it as writable to explain you how these properties were but even if I had not written this these two commands it had set this attribute as readable and writable as well so it's an optional thing Maya knows that by default every attribute is readable writable and storable but it's not keyable so in this example we are going to define it as keyable and I will return the create command 
create function over here so the handle or the m object returned by create would go inside ripple dot m object underscore amplitude then we would create another attribute which would be return under m object displays and we will create that so mfn atter dot create the full or the long name would be displace value comma short name is disp val and this will also be a float type value open maya dot mfn numeric data dot k float it's a float type attribute and the default value is zero and we would set it as mfn ether dot keyable mfn ether dot set min m fn ether dot set max all right so we would have to set those properties again because whenever we use create function those properties get reset so and now we would have to declare this inside class M object amplitude M object displays which will be open Maya dot M object type okay so we have those two variables created so this is check now we would have to attach those attributes to our node for attaching attributes we would use ripple the class name dot add attribute and what attribute we want to add ripple dot m obj dot amplitude and we would do the same thing for displays okay so we have added the attributes check now we would design the circuitry while designing the circuitry of this node we want to use the op output geom attribute that comes with the deformer node if in Maya we would type ripple dot output geom and we would create it using mfn atter dot create function Maya would think that it's a user defined output geom attribute it would not think or it would not take the value which would come from the default output geom node that comes with the deformer node so how we can access those attributes that come with the default deformer node when we generate a deformer node those attribute come with a node and how we can access them so the way we are going to access them is using swig and what is swig swig is uh first i would remove this and I would comment it and I would type swig which is simplified wrapper 
interface generator simplified wrapper interface generator are the tools that allow the developer to wrap the C C++ code with a scripting language so because the Maya code is written in C++ Autodesk has given us a way to use those attributes using swig and that's that's how we would have to use it because there is no straightforward way of using those attributes in Python and the way of using swig in open Maya is open Maya mpx dot c v a r dot then we would give the type of the node deformer node underscore the attribute which we want to access in this case it's output geom and this would return us a handle the way this create function return and we would take it in output geom all right now we have access to that attribute and we can design our circuitry so for designing a circuitry we would call at ripple dot attribute effects I would type this function again ripple dot attribute effects so which attribute would affect which attribute ripple dot m o b j underscore amplitude will affect output geom and ripple dot m o b j underscore displace will also affect output geom so we have also designed our circuitry check so our node initialize function node initializer function is complete and next step is to write this deform function which comes with a deformer node so we'll go inside uh, my class ripple and I would define deform so when the deform function is called by compute function of the node this function receives couple of arguments so first we would have to pass self because this is the part of a class then it would receive a data block after that it receives a geometry iterator and these iterators work on a geometry later on it would pass a matrix and it would also pass a geometry index so what is geometry index when a deformer node is applied on multiple geometries or multiple meshes all those meshes go inside this input attribute and if geometry 1 is affected there is a change in geometry 1 or 2 or 3 those indices will be passed inside the deform function so that we would know which corresponding output geometry 
we would have to affect. So the deform function would have the self, comma, the data block, which would have all the data of the attributes, comma, it would also have a geometry iterator that iterates on geometry. Then it would give us the world matrix of that particular geometry or the mesh which is affected. And then we would have the index. We would call it geometry index. Now, more good stuff about deformer node is coming. Consider that we apply a deformer node on multiple meshes and multiple geometries. And when we apply that deformer, deformer node on multiple geometries, they come inside input geom, which is inside uh, input array attribute. And we would perform any operation on these geometry we would have to reach to the input geom attribute so if we want to apply or perform any operation on the sphere which come which came inside input geom attribute we would have to reach to that input geom attribute and how we would reach to that particular attribute when a data block is sent to deform function it contains all the attributes of the node of the deformer node so the first thing we will do is we would attach a special handle on this input array. So the step one is attaching a special handle to the input array or the array value. And I'm calling this special handle is because this handle specifically attaches to array values. After that, we would ask this handle to jump to that particular index in which the mesh is affected. So if this is a sphere, this is a triangle, and this is a polycube, and something happened on this sphere and we know that we have the index of this affected mesh so we would ask this handle to jump to that particular location using the index which was passed to deformer deform function second thing is jump to element, a particular element of an array. Okay, so we have reached to this block now. 
and this block contains the group ID and input geom attribute now the third fun thing would be we will attach a handle to this array attribute or this compound attribute this is not an array attribute so this in this way this handle went inside that particular data blocks element so now after this step we have our input geom and a handle is attached to this compound attribute now next step is to reach to exactly at this mesh so this was the third step that we reached or the data handle will reach to a specific data block now the fourth step is so this compound attribute consists of input geom and a group ID and we want to reach to this this input geom which is a child of this compound attribute so using a child command we would reach to this input geom and we have achieved our goal so there are four steps using which we would reach to the specific input geometry or input geom attribute and we would now write the code for all these four steps inside Maya and before we start doing all those four steps we need to grab the input attribute that came with the deformer node and we know how to grab these kind of attributes which come with deformer node x deformer node underscore input okay we have now grabbed the input array attribute now the first step was to attach a specialized handle to input array attribute so how we are going to attach that handle to the, uh, to the array attribute and for that we are going to use data block which is a m data block type and we would use a function called as input array value and then we will pass that array attribute to which we want to attach an array handle so this returns an array handle and we will call that array handle or array data handle uh, data handle input array these variables are variable names are a little bit longer for now but whenever you would see the code again you would definitely quickly understand what is that variable and what is this story so we have completed our first step which was attaching a handle to a particular array attribute our second step was to jump 
to that particular element so our second step is to jump to the element now we would come back and write or use a function which is input array dot jump to element and to which element we want to jump and the index which we got in the deform function so we would use that index to jump to that particular element Now the third step is to attach a handle, uh, attach a data handle to the specific data block. So and for that to attach a handle to specific data block. And to do that we will use data handle input array dot input value and this would return that handle that data handle which is attached to the specific element or specific data block and we would call that data handle input element so this data handle input element is this handle right here data handle input element because this is attached to an element of an array And this handle was or is data handle input array because it is attached to an array. Now we would follow the fourth step. Now we would reach to the child which is this step and the child is input geom so we want to reach to the input geom which is also an attribute that comes with deformer node and for that as well we will type open maya dot mpx open maya mpx dot cvar dot mpx deformer node underscore input geom now we will use this input geom handle or input geom to reach to that child because we would have to define to which child do we want to reach so we would use data handle input element because we are handling the element handle now child this is the function is child and to which child to input geom child and this command would return us a data handle which is attached to input geom and now we have the data handle directly attached to input geom and we would use this data handle to retrieve our mesh and I will
would call it in mesh which is data handle input geom as mesh we want to get read the, the information which data handle has as a mesh so these are the four steps which we use to reach to the input geom from the data block this process is a little bit complicated so we would go to the blackboard again and quickly revise what we did using these commands so first of all we let Maya know that the input attribute which we want to use is the one that comes with the deformer node secondly we attach so this is our data block then we attach a handle to the array attribute and this array attribute or this handle is data handle input array in the next command we asked this handle to jump to a specific element and this element information came inside deformer or the deform function so the same handle jumped to a specific element in the third step if we see this section of the data block to which the array handle has jumped we have compound attribute inside that so in the next step we attached a handle to this compound attribute and this handle is data handle input array in the next command we let Maya know that the input geom we want to use here is the one that comes with the deformer node so this is the section of the data block to which we have the handle attached and this is your input geom this is group ID in the next command we told or we asked to give us the child of this compound attribute and the child's name is input geom so this gave us input geom and a handle is attached data handle is attached to input geom and the name of this data handle is in data handle input geom in the next step we want to use the information or the data storage that this data handle has in the form of mesh so we asked data handle input geom as mesh so we read this information as mesh so these are the steps we uh, perform to reach to the input geom now let's get back to our code okay so after getting our input geom as a mesh we would also get the envelope attribute that comes with the deformer node and that attribute is uh, helpful or that attribute is used to enable and disable or blend the effect of the deformer okay so now we have told Maya that the envelope attribute we want to use is the one that comes with the deformer node 
so and now we would attach a data handle data lock dot input value and attach data handle to what envelope which comes with deformer node and the information provided by this data handle we want to use that as float because we know that envelope is a float type variable or float type attribute as float and we want to store that inside a variable okay so we have gotten the envelope value as well now we also want to use the two attributes which we created which are amplitude and displace so we would attach the data handles to them as well and then we would read them as float because we know that these are the float attributes as well so first we would create a data handle for amplitude which would be data lock dot input value and ripple dot m o b j underscore amplitude I would just double check m o b j underscore amplitude and m o b j underscore displace and I would use this data handle amplitude as float and I would store it inside a variable which is amplitude value so this is for amplitude this is for envelope And now we are going to do the same thing for this place. Data handle this place. Data block dot input value. Ripple dot m obj underscore displace, and we want to use or read this value as float. So this place value is equals to data handle displace dot as float so we have now envelope value attribute value and the displace value After getting all the information about the variables which we need, we would now read the normal information of all the vertices on the mesh to apply the better ripple deformation. So for that, first we would create a function set that works on mesh, so which is openmaya.mfn mesh. Okay, and then we would attach our in mesh with that function set and we would receive it under in a variable mfn mesh so we have created a function set which is of which works on mesh and then we have attached our received mesh which is in mesh to that function set after that we would use a function that would give us the vertex normals and it which is mfn mesh dot get vertex normals okay so if this function 
gives us a float vector array which is a m float actor array so to receive that value we would also have to create m float vector array and uh, just to uh, make it more specific or more clear i would also add normal which is open maya dot m float vector array So if we take a look at the definition of get vertex normal we will see that this function takes four arguments or parameters and uh, the first one is a boolean and then it's a m float vector array where we will receive our uh, value of the normals of each vertex and then the object space so at the first which is the angle weighted it uh, averages out the vertex normals by surrounding face normals so we don't want to do that in this case so we would supply false first then we would give the m float vector array here and then I want to receive it under open Maya So I want to receive the information based on the object space. So we have received our normals as well and if we take a look at the deform function we have used the data block, we have used the geometry index and now we are going to use the geome geometry iterator. So this is one of the iterators which which we did not discuss in the iterators uh, video because we are going to discuss that this iterator in this video. So geometry iterator is a class of iterators that work on the geometry data. It might be the vertices for the polygon meshes, it might be the series for the nerves or the points for the subdivisions. It, it iterates over each point for the polygons polygon meshes we can retrieve the positions of each vertex by this uh, iterator so we are going to use it in the same way uh, we saw in the iterators video so first we would create a while loop while iterator is not done it, it is not done iterating all the information the point information provided by a uh, mesh data and each time we want the iterator to move so this is our while loop for the iterator and now inside which we are going to perform our calculation so as I mentioned that it gives you the point or the position of each vertex for the polygon geometry data so to receive the point information or the position information we will use a function of the geometry iterator which is dot position we will take it in a variable which is point position this function would return us a m point type data so this point position is a m point data which uh, would uh, contain x y z uh, positions of a vertex then we would uh, perform our calculation this is uh, the algorithm which i uh, came up with and uh, you can 
uh, write your or modify this algorithm uh, based on any in incoming factor or an additional value so in this case I'm going to uh, use each position separately so that I can demonstrate the concept of endpoint and the position information grabbed by the geometry trader so point position is equals to point position dot x plus I'm going to use a math function which is sine so first I would if I'm using math I would import math otherwise it would give me an error I'll go back here and I'm going to use one more function of the geometry trader geo trader dot which is the index which would give me the index over which the geometry trader is operating for example if a geometry trader is operating on vertex 0 or the 0th vertex of a polygon mesh it would give me the index value as 0 if it is working on the 10th vertex it would uh, give me the index value as 10 so I want to use that plus over here I want to use my displace value also I want to use my amplitude value and so because the envelope is the attribute that is used to disable enable or blend the effect of a deformer so whatever changes we are applying we would always multiply our envelope value with our calculation so that whenever this value is zero everything is zero nothing changes I forgot to add it equals to sign here so so now we have multiplied that with the envelope we also want to use our normals and we know that this is a float vector array and I want to use the element of that float actor vector array and of that element I want to use the x value so and which element do we want to use we want to use geometry traitor index so it, in this complete while loop we will get all the values of this vector starting from the zero up to the length of this array okay so this is the calculation which we have done for X position X now we will do the same thing for Y and Z so I will copy this will paste it here and paste it here I will change it y z y z and y and z just to make it more readable I would add a space here okay so this is now your new position offer this calculation being applied on it now we we read the position of each vertex we applied some calculation and then now we want to set the new position of each vertex over which the iterator is operating and for this we are going to use a function of the geometry iterator which is called as set position
and the new position is point position so by just by position we get the position of vertex and by set position we set the position of the vertex so now we have our necessary code for writing a deformer and uh, we would just go ahead and verify the code once all the spellings and the syntax so I'm pasting everything in, a, in notepad plus plus and I'm setting it the syntaxing, syntaxing for Python so I would start verifying my code uh, the node name and the node name variable all right that works node ID node ID is a uh, lowercase so I will change that then my ripple class which has mpx deformer node yes and I need two m objects which is m object amplitude and m object displace the constructor and I'm calling the constructor of mpx deformer node class as well then it's a deform function then I forgot to add the colons and then input variable CVAR and that's correct the data handle and the data block here is uppercase B data block input array and that looks right data handle jump element geometry index data handle input element input value input geom cvar input geom handle as mesh amplitude that's correct data handle I'll also check the spelling of data handle data handle input geom data handle analog data handle amplitude ripple obj and uh, so the name of our deformer is ripple here and the class is ripple as well so just to avoid the confusion I would call it ripple deformer so the name of our node will be ripple deformer and then we have this place that doesn't matter because it's a command but still it's a spelling mistake so and float vector normal get vector normal false which is upper F uppercase F and geometry traitor point point position so I missed I here and these were copy pasted so I'm missing I in all of those position geometry traitor it's not get iterator it's a geo iterator which is our geometry iterator dot next and open p is lowercase so we have a lot of uh, spelling mistakes and uh, so it's a it's a good uh, idea to verify your code before you go into Maya and uh, start executing it it's a set keyable because all those functions are set here it's a not keyable it's set keyable set keyable set keyable add attribute so that looks correct and I would uh, remove this space so we found a couple of spelling mistakes and uppercase lower cases And I will save the file now. Save as C drive plugin and ripple deformer. The pie. Save. Now get back to Maya and try to execute our deformer. 
so first of all import maya.cmds as cmds then cmds.load plugin and our plugin is inside c drive plugin and the name of the file is d triple deformer dot pi and just verify the name of the file ripple deformer yeah that's correct so try to load that load plugin lowercase l so our deformer has loaded and now we want to use it so I would create a sphere and I would use a command cmds dot deformer and the type is the name of the node and we named our node as ripple deformer try to execute that and here is an error which says get vertex normal okay and let's get back to our code and where we used our get vertex normal is here okay so the error is the there are two functions which are get vertex normal and get vertex normals so if you want to get the vertex get the normals of all vertices in an array which is of float vector type then we will have to use get vertex normals so I change that, save it, go back to Maya, create a new scene. We don't have to save it. And I would just unload my plugin using Plugin Manager. And I can reload it from here or I can reload it, reload it from the command. And I would create a sphere and create the deformer okay so our deformer has been created so this is an error free code now and we will go to uh, the attribute editor and we will try to use our deformer so I have brought my channel box here and I will try to change the values and here we go we have our deformer code working and this is the attribute value okay so that's the spelling mistake again which is not supposed to be attribute value it is supposed to be amplitude value so amplitude value and it's ample amplitude value so we will save that too and uh, just to show you the proper example I would reload it create a new scene create a sphere unload the plugin and load the plugin back unload plugin load the plugin back and apply the deformer again so here we have our corrected amplitude value and I will apply that value here and now I will use my displace and that is working perfectly and I will play with some more subdivisions here and change the displace value So that is how we write the deformer code. But at this point, the code which we wrote is not optimized for a good deformer. So in the next video, we would see uh, what we would have to do to optimize our code. And these optimizations are the necessary optimizations. We will have to do those changes to make our deformer efficient. So in the next video, we will see those optimization steps. Thank you.